Hello and welcome back to PC Burn. What I'm doing today is removing the stock bearings off of the Prusa i3 Mark III and replacing them with some plastic bushings. Uh, let's see here. We'll focus. Dry Lin by Igus. They look okay. It should be the correct model. The RJ4 for JP01-08 I don't feel able to hear this but I don't like the sound of that that might be fine it also it's also getting a bit of wobble so I don't know if that's the table or possibly uh, uh, you know well it's definitely one of the axes now, whether that's just resonant from the table or not, I don't know. But I wanted to replace these anyway. I figured, since I was seeing another oddball issue. There they are. Right, so I'm going to try to cheat on this. We'll see if this works. If not, I'll just be taking it all back apart and doing it properly. But now I'm just going to snip these, feed them out. And then try to cheat by popping these both out, unscrewing, well, let's see if I can get them off without actually taking these all the way off. The less work I have to do on this, the happier I'll be. Let's see. Now, nope. these are going to have to come off all the way. One, one grindy bearing. I think I'm curious about the dry lens. Well, curious about the performance of the dry lens with is the fact that they won't be collecting up plastic like these tend to. The LM8UU linear bearings, no matter where I've used them, have always collected up junk into the actual bearings as they run just because you inevitably get some powdered plastic and strings and what have you that linger around the print bed and inevitably end up getting caught on your on your bearings let's see how that yeah, that's it's quite good all right Now, I'm not sure how well these will work. I'm not sure if they'll work very long. I don't know about the longevity of them on the particular type of rail that's being used. Really, I didn't research this too much at all, and this wasn't the application I originally bought these for. They were just sitting around, and I thought it might make a neat changeover from the originals. Since they were sitting there... And I was thinking I might want to change out the LM8 you use that came with this anyway. This was one of the earlier Prusa i3 Mark III's, and from what I've read, it seems like a few people had some complaints with the noise being generated by the bearings. So there might have been a batch of bearings that were just a bit loud. Like I said, I'm not actually sure it was affecting performance at all. It might not have been. But... Since I had the Igus bearings sitting right there, I'm sorry, bushings, since I had the Igus bushings sitting right there, I thought to myself that it would make a neat project to switch them out. I could see how these perform. And I think I still have enough of them for the other uh, application that I had originally got them for anyway. Thinking on it, I'm not even sure these were the correct bearings for the application I wanted to use them on. I might have needed the shorter version, which I, I also have some of. Okay, that's... A 
Way too tight. Okay. Uh, hopefully I can just crush the bearing there. So, lesson number one. These are very easy to over tighten. Alright, so you might want to actually move these around a little bit while you're tightening them up ever so slightly. Because it looks like I just over tightened it ever so slightly. However, that seems like it's working okay. Maybe just to back it off a slight bit more. Alright. Good for that side. On to the next. Uh, looking at the bearings and some light, they don't look particularly bad. Not unusually worn looking. Chrome's still shiny on the bearings themselves, so probably still just fine. Or well, at least as fine as they were when they shipped. Also not sure how sensitive these are to positioning. Probably could have checked that out first, but didn't think of it. it. Doesn't seem terribly hard to unmount the bed on this, but we'll see if it goes back on okay. So far the Persi 3 Mark III has been pretty good. The multi-material extruder has been kind of wonky. I'm hoping they fix it in future updates. Like the when it's feeding and un unloading filament, it tends to do weird things sometimes. Uh, the sensing on the filament loading didn't seem like it was working quite right. I remounted it. It seems like it's working now, but I'm still not exactly sure what happened there because it had been working okay, so... Whoops. Shoot. Pay more attention to this thing. That's not moving. Make sure. Well, that's still a little loose. Tighten it a bit more. Still loose. Tighten. Just one more little nudge. slides. Yeah, that might require to be a little bit looser than that actually, so I'll try loosening it up just a tad from where it's immobile. Okay, so I can just barely move it in the socket. Hmm, that seems a bit tight, but all right, so let me get the third one on. Then we'll play around with it a little bit, see if we can Loosen it back up to the point where it moves freely on the rail, or if it's just a bit tighter on the rail with the I guess bearings, bushings. Man. So used to saying bearing. But these are definitely bushings.
that one needs to be tightened down a little more because there's a wire running up right next to it. So I don't want it to crimp the wire when I go to tighten it down. But you still don't want to torque it down because these need to be tightened in a specific order, which I'll go look up in a minute. There. Just enough so the wire won't slip under it. Now to go look up torque specifications. Okay, and here's the order in which to tighten the screws. First, tighten the center screw. Let's zoom out a little bit. Out. There we go. Then tighten the screws on the sides of it. And above and below it. Last, tighten the screws on the diagonal. I always prefer to tighten them in opposites. Don't know if that makes a difference or even if that's the best course of action for it. Alright, let's see how she goes. First I'm just running a Z calibration. Calibration failed, excellent. Definitely isn't anything loose on those axes either. I don't know what's causing that. Oh, it just doesn't like calibrating that. All right, let's see how quiet that is. Check it out, see if it's actually any better. It did sound pretty good doing the alignment, so that's something.
I'm going to run it through a quick first layer calibration. See if that works okay. Oh, shoot. One thing I did forget to do was put the zip ties back on. Where did those? Found them. Let's see if I can beat this. Just in time. Let's see, we'll make your trace. We'll use filament two. Let's see if that loads up. So that's not going to work. Well, it's certainly much quieter, so I can't even hear the Y axis moving now. That's obviously not going to work, so. Well, apparently can't exit out. But, as you can hear, the axis is quieter. We'll have to actually do some print testing to see if it's any better. I'll show that in the pink filament since we're trying to review that anyway. Till next time.